I want to share some thoughts with you about practice. Some ideas that I have been having and thinking about for the past couple of weeks, and I think that is a good moment for me to share it with you. It's about learning a new skill, it's about practice, it's about motor skill acquisition. My experience with music um, taught me that it requires a long time to perform, to play a music, musical instrument in a good level. I studied percussion for years, and then I, stud I studied composition. Uh, and I got to the level that I could compose my own songs. And I did compose and I did record it. And it's related to what I call it the magic 10. You may have heard about it that it takes 10,000 hours to be good at something, 10,000 hours of practice, or you may also have heard that it takes 10 years to acquire skills at something, to be good at something. Yes, it took me about 10 years of studying. Uh, it it depends on the on the stage of my life and during these ten years when I was practicing I was studying and uh, but on average I would study uh, in the afternoons percussion for at least two hours non-stop one session it would be it would be one session it would be daily and every day. John McLaughlin, he has his expression when people ask him, how much, well, how often should I practice? And he, he used to say, every day. So practice every day. One session of practice for two hours. And then, if possible, I would have another session of study. And of course, you have to, you have to read, you have to listen to music and so on. So these are the magic 10. This is the amount of time and the amount of effort that it takes to be proficient uh, in an instrument, a musical instrument. It, it is recorded as well that, yes, of course, you need 10 years of study to be able to perform well, but it may require you all the 10 years to be at the highest. There's, there's some studies they, they did long, long time ago, analyzing uh, data from poets, from writers, that poets, that poets would write their first work when they were around 24 years old, and then they, the major work, their major work, when they are around 35 years old. If I can recall, 123 poets were studied, analyzed data from 123 subjects. It was a long time ago. And the person who led this, if I'm not mistaken, with the the name was Risking, the same surname, Risking, the person who studied it. The most important thing about practice, now you have to practice, 
because you have to repeat and repeat and repeat. And how do you do this year after year, day after day? So the most important thing is motivation. You have to be motivated. You have to like it, of course, but not only this, because imagine studying something for five years and still not being good at it, or not even not being good at all after five years of studying, five years of training, you ha you may like it more, like it less uh, year after year, but you have to be motivated intrinsically. One day I'll talk about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. You there should be things inside you that gives you the drive to go through this process of learning, of practice, of skill acquisition that will will help you to overcome frustrations, pain and even suffering, a little bit of suffering due to, to, to the whole process of learning. And it is true that extrinsic motivation also can, can motivate people to perform extrinsic motivation that are things outside you, things that are giving positive or negative motivational tools. Um, rewards or punishment. And there are studies as well, um, old studies with typewriters, they no longer exist in their original form, they is a ty typing type machine, and they would use extre extrinsic motivational tools to increase performance and they would increase performance from 58 to up to 90 percent however extrinsic motivation is short lived so they, you can increase the performance in a certain period of time but however it may not last as long as you wish. Going back to learning, to learn a skill, to skill acquisition, no? when you think about not knowing anything about a specific subject, uh, not having the skill, and when you start learning it, there's a learning curve and the first stage of learning is the fast acquisition of skill. When you just start, you learn things very fast you know, in relation to what will come. You can acquire uh, relatively lots of skills in a short period of time. This is your learning curve. However, at some point, you may plateau. There's something which is called the symmetric learning curve, which is this sharp rise of skill acquisition. Then you have this plateau that is slowly, is little by little getting closer to flat. This is the ideal. Um, learning curve that you would have for you, but in my experience learning, in my experience actually learning different about different topics, this learning curve is not always flat. Symmetric is actually asymmetric. It is asymmetric because you can have of course, this first stage of learning that you learn uh, relatively fast, so you have a jumping, 
jump on the skill, your skill level, then you may have a plateau. At some point, at some stages, you feel like that you lost some of the skills, or you feel like that you're learning less, and then you have another rise in skills. And if you can imagine, if I can describe for you, it's like waves, upward waves that they go up and down, up and down. It is what is my personal experience and, and working with people and studying with people, learning with people, that's what actually happens. It's like when you go to practice and things don't work as well, you don't perform as well as you did perform a week ago. Or you get to this stage, this phase that for weeks you see no improvement, you plateau. And then all of a sudden you boom, okay, I understand it, I'm getting I'm getting better, I feel I'm getting better. And then again, one day you get to practice and you feel, oh my god, things went wrong. I don't know, I'm making lots of mistakes. And it's important to, to take into consideration that the learning curve is not symmetric, but asymmetric, because it helps us to manage our expectations and to reduce frustration. Imagine yourself studying something, let's talk about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, of course, and your first three to six months, your first six months, let's say, the six months, you have a first stage of, okay, let me figure out the first, six, first to second month, figuring out what's going on, and then boom, up to six months, you learn a lot. You feel like, wow, I have learned so much within these six months. And then you have this little plateau that you, okay, week after week, if you are not learning, and then one day, one week, a whole week of training, you feel like you forgot things. You feel like there are things not working for you, that you're making more mistakes that then what you used to make, and it can be frustrating. It can be actually extremely frustrating when these phases, they last for a long period. However, if you take, you take into consideration that this learning curve is not always upwards, but it can go up, plateau, down, then up, and down, then boom, goes all the way up. And if you have, if you take this into consideration in your learning journey in the first, first, second year, you will, you can expect, let's say, first six months, you learn a lot, then you may have a plateau, or may, one day you go, you get there, and you feel like, okay, making lots of mistakes, things are not going well, and I'm not performing as before, and how long is it going to take? And then you have to remember, okay, it's asymmetric. It means that it's, it's natural, it can happen. As long as I'm training, as long as I'm coming back, at some point I will see improvements again. So taking this into consideration to manage our expectations and reduce, reduce the level of frustration. Something else about skill acquisition, about learning. Talent isn't everything. For sports, for instance, now you have body types that they may benefit people to do a certain sport. Then you have agility, the the natural reaction time of a person, mobility, flexibility, uh, natural strength, uh, recovery levels, even age, age groups, 
depending on the age group the person is, all the things that will affect, will affect, will affect uh, uh, someone's, someone's rate of rate learning. Of learning. And, and someone, someone that, that is, is more talented, talented, so it's talented, more talented that I may learn, learn faster. faster than the average, let's call it the average, or has a, a body type that it feels like, you know, it's like swim, swimming, you know, swimming. People with a very specific body type, they, they may perform better at swimming. And they have this natural talent that we see, like and it has a natural talent. It's not everything. If there is no practice, if there is no commitment, if there is no proper training, doesn't matter how talented the person is. It's like someone not coaching. You know, doesn't, not interested in, in taking directions or someone not paying attention to details. And this person may, in the long run, on the, on the, on the long, long run, on the long run, may not perform as well as another person that in the beginning didn't feel so as didn't f feel so as so talented or didn't have it as easy in terms of mobility flexibility this old type of thing but the, the, this person endured the learning process went through the pain and the suffering of acquiring skills Acquiring the motor skills, acquiring the strength, the conditioning that it requires to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I tell you that I, I have seen this over and over again. In the long run, the not so talent will be the one staying in the sport and the one actually performing. The analogy <laughs> is about the stars. No? You have these big stars that they are blue, the blue giants, and you have the dwarfs, or like our sun, that is not a, like not such a big stars. And the small stars, when they are born, the stars, the small stars, like ours, our sun are the ones that they last for billions of years. And then when they fade, they fade slowly. However, when you have these big giants, the blue giants, and they're so powerful, so big, but they don't last as long. They may last a relatively short period of time not billions, but only millions of years, and then they, pull, they explode and disappear. Which are the ones that may create a black hole. Anyways, let's go get back to, to our, our topic. As talent isn't everything, repetition is king. Repetition is the main factor for skill acquisition. We have to repeat. You have to go to training. And you have to do, perform, do it again, over again, over again, in order to learn. Of course, it requires motivation. It requires a certain level of commitment. Sometimes, you know, the motivation is to commit. It's someone saying that, look, I'm starting doing this thing and I'm committing to it. I'm committed to this sport. I'm committed to this new skill. I'm committed to playing this, to learning this musical instrument. I'm, I'm going 
go through it. And you have to come back to training and you have to repeat. Sometimes repeating the same thing over and over again, dozens and dozens of times until the skill is acquired. There's another thing, no? Okay, just go to training and just keep training, keep training. That's it. Ah, how do I learn it? Just keep coming back. This is the first thing that you say, no? This is the first thing that I say. Just come back. Come back tomorrow. Come back next day. Come back to training. But there's another factor as well about practice. Because when you start just coming back and just training by training only the same things you get just so far if you are practicing the things that you know you are going to be good at the things that you know of course but if you are neglecting practicing the things that you don't know your horizon may not expand as much. An argument for that is to specialize. Okay, I want to specialize in something. Specialize in something. Yes, yeah, so you specialize in this thing, which makes sense. But even within this specialization, if there is no variation, even in the same system, let's call it a system, you may not progress as much in the long run. And you get into a plateau uh, in terms of knowledge. That's why I'm a true believer of having practice, which is well, structured which is structured in the way that even within specializing in only one system we can look at the system the same system the technique you can call it the same technique armbar and you can look at the armbar from different perspectives you can practice the armbar from different situations, you can you can defend the armbar from different positions, from different situations. Then, even working on only one technique, your horizon is still expanding. But for this to happen, the practice has to be well structured and I'm, I'm, I am a true believer that periodization has to be implemented at training at different levels of training not on the levels of intensity throughout the month the training month or the training cycle but periodizing as well on other levels, introducing and changing variables within the training that helps with recovery, talking about volume and intensity, but it also helps with different with with skill acquisition. But then thinking about practice, we and when we are practicing and we are in a setting, working, training, where there is a well structured, structured methodology, there, then you have ways to acquire motor skills. 
and also there's different ways to approach it because there are certain motor skills that you require to perform certain techniques a throw you have to know how to fall and you can have specific solo exercises that will help you to acquire this, this necessary motor skills for certain uh, techniques especially for safety how you have to know how to fall safely when you're being thrown uh, especially especially the the major throws on the throw that you're thrown thrown you're thrown over over overhead thrown or you're thrown thrown on your back you have to learn it and you have specific individual and partners uh, specific exercises to learn to fall properly and then there is specific practice that will help to develop these skills thinking about falling properly then you can fall do front row ukemi what they are the ukemi is how to fall safely forward backward sideways frontally and then it can be done you see as an exercise or as, a, as games you can also gamify the whole thing to make it more fun working with partners over the partner, the side of partner, over the back. There are different ways of doing it. Thinking about falling, who came in. And then it can be introduced in the actual practice, being thrown, major throws with and without resistance. And this, these skills are introduced gradually not long time ago someone shared with me a nogi jiu-jitsu competition and i'm not sure now i don't remember exactly what throw it was i think it was a hip throw and the person being thrown instead of breaking full posture tried to posture was kind of being thrown over his head, on his head, which he would have to do this forward roll. He decided to get his spine straight instead of curved and stretch his arm to posture and his elbow overextended in a very nasty way and this has to do with knowing how to properly react when being thrown and to learn that you learn this type of of motor skills the safest way is doing gradually as i just have said Thinking about when you're when you're practicing and uh, feedbacks, uh, when you want to give someone the uh, feedback, are you going to feel so? You someone is being trained, and uh, depending on the way we're training, and there are different ways of giving receiving for the practitioner to receive feedback which are external feedbacks external cues when the coach one is indicating during practice the coaching is indicating what can be improved or pointing out what has been properly done depending on the on the context depending on what it needs to be said so it's a, you know, the external free feedback when you have someone telling you something or it could be an internal uh, feedback as well when imagine that you're practicing your training or sparring or you're doing some positional training or whatever and by practicing 
you may fail in doing something and then you have to do and you try to do it again and you yourself address the issues that you have found if you think that okay uh, my hand was positioned in a way that it shouldn't be there or maybe the most efficient way it was to position the hand in a different angle next time you, when you get to the same situation and you try to apply the variation and see if you have and see what the feedback is the feedback could be the improvement in the performance improvement in technique or maybe not maybe say oh my god it's even worse i have to find another solution so external and internal feedback are important so and finally a final thought is when we're learning to perform we're learning to perform a movement or a skill or a technique there are different rates of complexity where we're going to be performing this skill imagine a hip escape a couple couple of days ago i will i was talking during lesson about the hip escape i'm going to give you the same example why i was explaining why we do this solo movement of the hip escape over and over again and yes we learn to have the mod the core the motor skill to do the shrimp and there are different types of hip escape now if you if you ever want me going to you and you want to have a hip escape session we can spend a whole hour only doing hip escape which is lots of fun <laughs> but of course you can do the hip escape solo and you perform it solo but how about having someone on top of you not giving you much resistance there are some adaptations in your body in your movement uh, that you have to apply in order to achieve the goal the objective of doing the hip escape but then it can be even more complex with more resistance with someone actually holding you and not letting you hip escape so you have to be able to perform the same movement under different the different levels of complexity okay so this are my thoughts i spoke about the magic 10 10 years 10,000 hours to learn a skill motivation motivation intrinsic and extrinsic motivation one day if you like comment you could comment that you would like and then i can have a feedback from you as well that uh, you're that are listening to me because i like feedback i like external feedbacks you could tell me if you would be interested in listening a little talk about uh, extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation then we spoke about talent practice where we structure structured practice internal versus external feedback and ability to perform under different rates of complexity well i hope you have enjoyed and share this content like show your appreciation if you do like it show your appreciation for this content that you are listening to bye bye